Welcome to Training Unleashed, the show that will help you design and deliver training that's off the chain and will make a difference. Now, here's your host, Evan Hackle. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another great edition of Training Unleashed. Today, we've got a very interesting topic. We're going to talk about compliance. Now, before you hang up on me, okay, we're going to talk about how this is like super fun, unbelievably good for your business. And if you're in the training world, really important to get and understand because compliance is an area that training can have an incredible impact incredible impact. You can show ROI. You can get dollars from management for compliance because there's an amazing return on investment. And, you know, on top of that, you can save people from injuries, death, all those terrible things. So you're doing something pretty noble. So let's just say right now, compliance is an exciting topic we're all amazingly interested in. And actually, I am really looking forward to this because um, our guest, Steve Vinci, uh, with, and I'm, if I mispronounce this, Steve, help me, um, Trestle uh, Consulting? Compliance. Compliance, Trestle Compliance. And um, so our, our guest, and I never get into bios because I like to get into the meat. So I'm not going to get into his bio other than to say, this guy knows compliance. He's worked in Congress on it, committees. He has been, he's a lawyer, he has litigated it. I mean, we're talking to a true expert in the area of compliance. So Steve, let, let me just start with like a really simple question. Why should compliance matter to anybody? Well, first of all, thank you, Evan. It's a real pleasure to be here with you and, and with your guests. I, I couldn't be more excited uh, about compliance. I know that's counterintuitive. But why should compliance matter? Well, in this day and age of COVID-19 uh, and high risk, uh, compliance is your business multiplier. And, and I know that's sort of counterintuitive, but it can help protect you. And as you said, it can really uh, provide a return on your investment. The relative cost of putting in an effective compliance program uh, compared to the risk of a whistleblower lawsuit or a violation because you are out of compliance, uh, it's just enormous. Uh, uh, the benefits are just totally outweigh the potential risk. And so in this high risk world that we live in, a compliance program is a smart, sensible way to put in place smart, sensible controls that enhance and enable your business to compete and win, regardless of what that business is. Okay, Steve, let's have some fun because I said we we're gonna make this fun. Can you share an example of compliance gone wrong that's like cost a company a ton of money with, you know, don't share their name. We don't, we don't need to, we don't need to embarrass the corporation, but just uh, share like an instance of like, wow, if this company had only done these things, this would have never happened. And then this, or, you know, you know, share the horror story. Absolutely. Well, uh, I'm sure uh, so I know the life sciences industry, pharmaceutical, biotech, med tech, uh, backwards and forwards. I've been practicing in this field for over 20 years and more broadly in healthcare for 25. The one case that really comes to mind that I think all your viewers are very familiar with is the Theranos case, uh, where Elizabeth Holmes, the uh, sort of child genius from Stanford, founded this uh, blood testing company with the concept that you can learn amazing things from just a pinprick of blood. Well, it sounded too good to be true, and guess what? It was. But it, she attracted incredible investors and members on her board to include George Schultz, and the company took off. And she was, I believe at one point, the wealthiest woman CEO in the world. But then it all came crashing down. Why? Well, there weren't controls in place to catch it. Uh, to catch the problem, to catch the smoke and mirrors where employees or fellow executives could have said, wait a second, uh, this doesn't sound right. Wait a second, this really isn't working. Wait a second, where's the science to back this up? A compliance program is that kind of internal check and control that uh, 
that helps visionaries. And again, we don't want to suggest that you shouldn't be a visionary trying to break through the ceiling, trying to change the world in a way that's revolutionary. Heck, that's our in our, in our DNA as Americans. We want to encourage that. And again, compliance can help you do that and still be successful. So that's a clear example where a compliance program, and I would add an ethics and compliance program, because it's not about just doing what's required. It's about doing what's right. And you need a team, a team of professionals with wisdom to really discern that and, and make that call on each and every case. So Theranos could have been avoided and investors could have saved billions of dollars had there been an effective ethics compliance program in place at the time. They put one in place later, but it was too little too late. So when I listen to you, I hear two things. One, you literally were getting at and one you didn't say, but I believe because of our pre-conversation is true, is there's two, two real key at, uh, parts to this compliance program. One is the development of it and creating a methodology to make sure the company is ethical, the company has validated what it does. Um, and then the other would be how to train people to be compliant and how to train people to raise their hand when they see problems so that they feel comfortable. Uh, so, go ahead. Bingo, yeah, you nailed it. We're all familiar with going through the airport, perhaps less so in the past year than ever before, but nevertheless, uh, we, we know the adage, when you see something, say something, right? Yeah. Well, you have to recognize what you're looking at in order to be able to say, hey, wait a second, that could be a problem you raise your hand and say something. Same thing uh, in, internal to corporations and to any company. Uh, you need to know when you recognize a risk. And that's where training is perhaps the most important element that's the glue that, that connects all of the structure of a compliance program from the governance to policy procedures, monitoring, all that stuff. It only makes sense if people get it, if they understand and hear through training why this is important. It's the why behind the what that training really explains. So, um, so some of our listeners are sitting here and listening to you and say, God, I could see that example company. That makes complete sense. Medical science, et cetera. But now let's kind of relate this because a lot of our listeners are in franchising. You know, I own a franchise and, and it's in food or it's in fitness um, or you know, I run a business and, and I'm, I'm a legal firm, which is something you know about. How do they develop compliance programs for their companies? Because, you know, it's food, you know, I, I go, I get surf safe certified, you know, is there more to it? Is it, or is it simple? Well, just to level set things, um, uh, I'm a licensed attorney, but not a practicing attorney. Uh, we're a consulting company, so we don't provide legal advice, just to put that out there. Well, I, I, want, I just meant that you know what compliance right. issues would be for law firms, not I've, the, I've, I, 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 get, I get what you're saying, thank you. Sure, but, uh, but basically any company, whether you're a law firm, whether you're a franchise for a fast food uh, chain, whether you're a fitness uh, company, whether you're privately owned, et cetera, what's most important, and as an entrepreneur, um, I really appreciate this, uh, is trust. Is trust with your customers, trust with your clients. Credibility, trust, integrity. Uh, an ethics compliance program, and here's the thing, it doesn't have to be this huge mammoth bureaucracy that these Fortune 500 companies have. It can be very precisely tailored uh, to your size, to your needs. But what it does, it provides a leadership, identifies values, provides consistency that helps shape behavior within your company to enable consistent outcomes that all yield the right outcomes that you want. In other words, your food is safe. Your, your, your fitness equipment is safe. It's high quality, it's functioning, it works. Your legal advice uh, is, is, is on target. It's, it's, it's well-researched, it's accurate, it's, it's correct. Um, and so, and your folks are trained that if they don't know something, they don't pretend they do. Uh, again, it's all about delivering quality service, quality advice, 
quality products. So think of ethics and compliance as, as a quality mechanism uh, that helps ensure that your customers know that when they work with you, they get quality every time and your compliance program can help ensure that. I just want to point out to our listeners that Steve actually exhibited great compliance when I inferred that he was a lawyer, which he is, to be clear that he was giving consulting advice, not legal advice, because that's an example of good compliance so that people would not interpret, misinterpret what he was saying. So I, 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 I want to just acknowledge because I noticed that. As I'm sitting here thinking about this, I think a lot of companies don't think about compliance. I think they just do. But I can think of a lot of our clients, like, so we work a lot with people in the massage industry. And, you know, one of the things they think through is, okay, what are the things that are appropriate? What can a, a, a masseuse do? Where can they touch? What do they, questions do they ask? What can, what can the customer do that's acceptable? What can the customer do that's unacceptable? What you do when it's unacceptable? This is all about compliance. And thinking through those things, restaurants, food contamination, you know, what are your operating procedures to make sure that you are properly utilizing refrigerators and stacking them in the right way, that people, things that are not left out too long, uh, you know, how do you notice and make sure that people are not getting food that can make them sick? It's really taking the filter of risk compliance and, and just running that filter through your entire business and making sure that you're really thinking through those things. Um, exactly. exactly, Evan. Uh, uh, well put. The way I like to think about compliance and the various elements of it is, is think of our country. We have a constitution. And it's at the center of our government. It, it sets the values of who we are as Americans. And from that flows a statute and laws, uh, which are like policies. So a con the, the, the constitution is like a code of conduct for a company. The, uh, the statutes and laws are like the policies for your company. And the regulations in government are like the SOPs, the standard operating procedures. If you think of it, and it's all a system of governance, of shaping, and directing behavior within appropriate boundaries. That's really what it's about, whether it's in the, in the government world or in a private uh, company. And again, it doesn't have to be big and complicated, but it does have to be um, sincere and grounded in reality that helps produce action. It's, you know, words are important, but at the end of the day, it's actions that count and it's behavior. And it's really about connecting with people so that their hearts and minds understand the why behind the what of compliance. Why do we have to do it? And as every good salesperson knows, and I've learned this from working with some of the very best, is that for every customer, you need to answer the question, what's in it for me? Why should I listen to you? Why should I buy this product from you? What is the value that I will receive? And so you have to answer that question uh, from a compliance program. Uh, and, and the answer is, is that it will, uh, again, the, the relative risk that we face in this enormously ever complicated world we live in. Um, uh, it's hard to keep track of it. Really, no one person can. So you need some process, some system that does that to ensure you operate effectively to, again, keep winning that trust with your customer. Just as a, as a quick uh, way of remembering how I look at compliance, I look at it as winning with compliance. It's really <laughs> about how you win in the marketplace by, uh, again, unleashing the passion, the aggression of your sales team, of your own team, so that you know where the, where the rocks, where the shoals, where the risks are, and you know how to avoid them. And that creates an advantage. So let's shift the subject, because I think we've done a really good job that companies need to really think about their risks, think about what's important, how to be compliant, what are their operating procedures. Now let's talk about the role of training. What is the role of the training department in compliance? Well, uh, at the risk of getting a, a little technical, um, yeah. there are seven elements that have been adopted as industry standards that have been issued from the Office of Inspector General for the Department of Health and Human Services. But more broadly, across industries, these seven elements are well recognized by compliance professionals and lawyers. They're minimum elements. 
There's a fourth element that most compliance professionals recognize as the most important. It's the glue that holds everything together, and that's communications and training. Why is it the most important? Well, it's because, as I referenced earlier, at the end of the day, you can have all the words and rules and structure in place, but what matters most is what people do. What people do on the job when nobody's looking and you have to connect with people. They need to embrace compliance. And so training serves is the vehicle where hopefully you inspire compliance. You don't force it down their throat as we've seen in the whole COVID situation, that simply doesn't work, okay? So if you want the outcome that you're seeking is that people behave within certain boundaries and achieve certain goals to yield the business outcomes you want, then you need to connect with their hearts, excuse me, hearts and minds and their senses. They need to feel your passion. They need to feel that you truly believe in what you're saying and they should too. And that's really the most important role of training because at the end of the day, no matter what levels people are, we're all human beings. We're all inherently flawed. We, we all have our senses. We all can get excited some more than others. We all are rational beings. And so an effective trainer understands that, connects with their audience, uh, understands the world as their audience sees it through their eyes, and then communicates the core messages, the key takeaways of that training so that training will be remembered, that training will stick. And there you go. And that accomplishes the compliance program's purpose. So I love what you're saying. And you know, essentially having a policy without training isn't effective because you're not really implementing the policy. And I love the idea of connecting with the value and the emotion. And a lot of times it's really about protecting people from harm or death. Uh, could be protecting yourself, could be protecting a customer or a coworker. Um, I want to, for just a second here, just elaborate on the economic value, because I think this is really important. If you teach workplace safety so that your employees don't get hurt at work as much, you are going to have a profound impact on your workman's comp insurance. So the company not only gets the benefit of people not getting hurt, reduces the difficulty of finding replacement workers for someone that is hurt, but they also get a huge economic benefit by reducing workman's costs, workman comp costs. It's significant, it's real, true ROI that can be shown and proved. And, and I encourage people to work with their insurance agent to talk about what kinds of training they can do and what effect it would have and to see the economic impact because it's massive. The other thing um, that I think is important and this is universal to the whole audience, is sexual harassment training. And this is an important topic because there's a requirement. And so there's part of the argument and, and a very valid part, which is sexual harassment training is important because it's about the safety of people at work. It, it's about fairness, you know, equity at work. That, for me, that is enough, right? That That is a good thing. But from a company perspective, if there's a problem and you get sued, there's a thing called punitive damages, which I know you know a lot more about than I do. But essentially what happens is there is the actual harm and then there is a penalty for the company for bad behavior. And the purpose of that penalty is to make it so harsh that the company will never do it again. But if the company can show that it was responsible that it did the training, document that it did the training, um, and you know did the other procedures in terms of when people report things, and you know followed the standing operating procedures for it, the damages are going to be much less because they're not going to look at the company as reckless. But when the company is reckless, it's a different story. And I've talked a lot, so I'm going to let you maybe comment on what I just said. Well, Evan, um, you're absolutely right. Um, and there, there are all kinds of returns on the investment of training, whether it's on sexual harassment, 
uh, or, or any other issue that, that you've mentioned. Um, first and foremost, again, how that training is done is critical. Uh, but to your point, doing the training in and of itself is a measure of protection because it shows in the, in the legal compliance world, uh, the language is that you take the quote, due diligence steps to detect, pre prevent and correct any kind of misconduct. And you're abiding by the uh, requirements to conduct sexual harassment training, for example, uh, that's not optional. Uh, uh, but in terms of employee safety, et cetera, the other thing this does is it signals to prospective employees that you're trying to recruit. It signals to current employees that you want to retain that this company cares. And uh, hopefully that's real and true. And whoever's presenting the training uh, points that out. Hey, look, this company has invested uh, scarce resources to bring this to you because this company is committed to its employees' health and safety, to, to following the law to ensuring we have an harassment-free uh, environment that respects people, uh, that we follow that law in terms of equal employment opportunity and anti-discrimination. We treat all people with respect. Guess what? That person's going to be excited. They're going to be proud to be part of your team. And that'll translate into passion and performance. And so there's all kinds of returns in conducting effective training. Now, you can have ineffective training. As I referenced, the worst is if, it's, if you just sort of, some presenter very blandly goes through some check marks and blah, 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 and it's forgotten and therefore useless. You know, you may have the documentation, but in terms of the actual effect on behavior, not gonna happen. You have to have someone that has that excitement, the passion, the belief that what they're doing matters and that the audience should listen to it and, and, and embrace it because it will matter to them as well. I, I remember the case of sexual harassment taking training 20 years ago. And it, you know, it was the state of the art and it was awful because it was basically a PowerPoint with audio going and right. you're just like nine, mind dumbing the things. So you know, at, at Tortal, we, you know, we create interactive scenario-based sexual harassment training. So you get to watch scenarios and ask what you would do and have somebody really think about it and challenge it. It's interesting. It, it's, it's not boring. And to your point, you know, if you want people to retain the learning, it has to be well done. And back to your earlier point, they have to understand what's with it for them, why they want to do this. Why is this, why is this impor important for them? Um, exactly. Which is, which is very interesting. So I think we've done an excellent job making compliance something that's interesting and opportunity for organizations to save money and something that will have a very positive impact on the company because you're literally uh, protecting people from getting sick, hurt, death, all those things. Very important, at least to me. And I think most of our audience. Um, Steve, can you just tell us a little bit about your company who your favorite kinds of uh, customers are, and I know you're you're a little you're a little niche, um, and uh, just you know, sure. you know who who are, the, who are the people that should be reaching out to you? Well, thank you, Evan. Um, our company, Chesel Compliance, uh, just celebrated its fourth year anniversary. Uh, we're we're a boutique consulting company with an office on Newbury Street in the heart of Boston, right across the river from the Global Center for Biotech. Uh, in Cambridge. Uh, we have clients um, across the world. Um, we have recently been awarded the, as the best compliance innovative solutions provider in the US by a UK uh, organization called Global uh, Health and Pharma. Uh, we've received other awards. Uh, we serve on, the, on Compliance Week, uh, which is a well-recognized cross-industry uh, leader in compliance that's also headquartered in Boston. Um, we have a group of about 10 uh, partner level experts that are across disciplines. I'm an attorney, a, a business guy, um, uh, but we have creative uh, folks, uh, we have investigators, um, we have all kinds of folks to support the bespoke tailoring uh, of compliance programs for pharmaceutical companies, biotech companies, and med medical device or med tech companies. That's what we do. That's what we leave, um, live and breathe, excuse me. 
Uh, and I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to, to share a little bit about our company. Well, you're, you're very welcome. And, you know, compliance is very important. Some in, in your field, probably much more complicated and more difficult than in most. Um, but everybody needs to take compliance very seriously. I mean, that's, that's just the reality. Um, Steve, I know you have an offer and I'd love to have you share that offer. Sure. Well, thank you, Evan. Absolutely. For anyone out there in the audience that's interested in contacting me, um, I'm more than happy to provide a, a consultation for 30 minutes uh, about compliance uh, and compliance programs that may be relevant for you. Um, you can reach, check out my website at www.tressel, T-R-E-S-T-L-E, compliance, C-O-M-P-L-I-A-N-C-E, Dot com. Excellent. You can find everything there. You can find our contact information. You can find uh, our, our list of services. And so I think uh, um, you, you can uh, find everything you need there just to keep it simple. Uh, I'm also on LinkedIn. So if uh, anyone's on LinkedIn, you can find me very easily. Um, I have several articles uh, there that may be of interest to the audience. But thank you very much, Evan. For Excellent. Sharing. And Steve, we always end with, if you have one tip to share, what would that one tip be? Well, I think as all good professionals uh, know, you always start with the end in mind. And so when it comes to training, the one tip I would share is keeping in mind what you want to accomplish. You want to be remembered you want the training to stick. You want it to affect behavior. So the biggest sin, in my view, in training is to be forgotten, to be bland and boring. So the one tip I would share is prepare, 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 and be excited, be passionate, believe in the training content that you're presenting and see the world through the eyes of the audience, make it relevant and answer the question, why is this important to me? and you will get the results that you need from your training. It's an excellent tip and it applies to all of training, not just compliance training. Uh, so thank you for the tip. Um, Steve, I wanna thank you for being a guest on the show. I wanna thank um, C-Suite Radio and C-Suite TV as being uh, not, you know, not just sponsors, but being just amazing partners. Uh, I want to let the audience know we do have a website recently redone, trainingunleash.net, and we now have a book club. So if you're interested in reading books and it's all online, it's it's all virtual when you want, and and chit chatting with other uh, listeners or watchers of the show, uh, go to trainingunleash.net and sign up for the book club. It's been a tremendous amount of fun. Everyone have a great day, and again, Steve, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you, Evans. It's been a real pleasure, and I hope I've provided some tangible value and some good tips to your audience to use right after listening to this podcast. Thanks so much. I think you've done just that, Steve. Thank you. Training Unleashed is brought to you by Tortal Training, specializing in e-learning and interactive online training solutions for corporate, government, nonprofit, and franchise organizations. Tortal makes effective training easier. Just go to Tortal.net to gain access to real-world tools that can make a difference. That's Tortal.net, T-O-R-T-A-L, Tortal.net.